Last week, we talked about substantial and insubstantial and how it is the insubstantial that, that powers the substantial. Substantial is, is the stuff that, that we get to look at. We, we see it, we, uh, you know, we can observe it. It's the stuff we do. And it's where our attention goes to first. We tend to go there and, and sometimes never leave. We think about, okay, what do I do next? And uh, what I'd like to bring to your attention is the idea of this insubstantial quality that precedes that. And this is what makes Taiji Trans special. So we're not looking at, say, just developing muscle memory. We go through these various forms and things like that, and just so that we can and memorize those with our bodies so we can tune out and forget it all and just kind of be able to think about the ball game last night or what we're gonna have for dinner while we're doing our forms. This way we actually are present for each moment of the event. So um, prior to the, the, the doing, whatever that is, there is a, a state of being. And, and this is where we get into the, the woo-woo stuff, but it's, um, we, we shift into uh, a different state of awareness in order to do this. We shift from the thinky, thinky mind and into a state of, of whole brain coherence where we are able to think, but we don't have to. So the, the default mode network, which is the, the, the chatterbox, which is going constantly, it takes a back seat for a moment and we get to um, just hear what's going, we just get to be rather than listen to, uh, to the noise for the moment. And that precedes the doing. What that does is that allows for a whole body energetic connection to occur, allows for an integration of your uh, body, mind, spirit. And it has uh, enormous practical benefits as far as Tai Chi Tran is, uh, is concerned. And um, usually it's relegated to the very highest levels, but I, I don't think that's necessarily uh required that you uh, have to be a great grandmaster to be able to to do this stuff i think it's actually required to do taiji trend correctly anyway is you have to be able to at least momentarily shift into that that clear-minded state and be able to actually be present for whatever movement you're doing and working that into a Tai Chi Chuan form, Qigong, whatever, standing postures, whatever, so that you're constantly re-establishing your being, re-establishing your, your, your presence. And doing that, that allows you to access uh, you know, so much more. Uh, you're, it's a whole different, order of magnitude once you go into that we move into a uh, a place where we're actually we're able to access what uh, cheng man ching called the uh, the spiritual force it takes a certain amount of um practice and uh certainty that oh yeah this is this is what we're talking about this is what we're doing and that requires you know some feedback to, to make that happen, but you can lay the foundation in your practice. And you know, especially now is the perfect time to do it. And the way we get to that state of, of being is to, I find that it's real easy to make the shift if you feel, if you actually get the tactile sensations and also the the not just the external sensations but the 
the internal ones, the interoception, the, uh, you're feeling what's going on inside you. You know, I was talking uh, to someone uh, and they were saying how uh, getting into feeling their bones. And, uh, oh, Mike Ricciardi, a lot of you know him. He was saying how he's, lately he's been practicing in his meditation, feeling his bones. And uh, suddenly, like, he's getting all this power from, from that. He you know, was talking about how he was, was uh, uh, arm wrestling with, with a, a very, uh, his, uh, his nephew was a big, strong football player and, and was just very easily able to handle the, the extreme force being generated by the, uh, by, by the young guy. And he was feeling into his bones. So I'm taking that a step further and saying that that feeling then produces a state of being that allows us, before we actually try to do something, to get our whole system organized in a way that allows for maximum efficiency and it there's, there are emergent properties, emergent qualities that come out of, out of that new state. They come in. Now, each of you has had that. Each of you has been there many, many times. And uh, I'm just calling your attention to it. I'm calling your attention to the fact that this is something that oftentimes so, much, so many of these things that I talk about are buried in plain sight. The things that we do all the time. I mean, like talk about, you know, pointing your finger, right? It's like, come on. <laughs> How many times, you know, in your life have you pointed your finger? But until you actually bring that into, you, you actually feel the finger instead of just, just, just doing it, you know, if you actually stop and feel the finger, reach and feel the finger, it's like, oh, we've got a new, a new ball game now. Okay. And, but that's, just the beginning that opens the door that's i i've always said that that is like it's not the only way to get coherent but it sure is a uh a, a quick and dirty way to to get there and uh and something you can you know it's accessible all all the time but it's another one of those things that is buried in plain sight so the um so taking it to now and and what you know, something we can do just, just as you're sitting there. Uh, I've been focusing a lot on elbows lately, so I'm going to, to use that. So, you know, feel your index fingers and then just reach out slightly with your elbows, relax your shoulders and feel that. Feel what's going on inside your body. It's, it's that simple. That's that state of being that precedes the doing. Because when we try to do something, we either do it at, at a pre-conscious level, that is, it's just sort of a, something that we're not thinking about, we're doing it anyway, or we're doing it consciously. That is, we're saying, I'm going to lift my hand now, and you, I, oh, there it is. You know, and I, that's a conscious intent that I, I place there. There are lots of things. In fact, most of what I do during the course of the day is pre-conscious. You know, my heart beats, I breathe, you know, you know da, da, da. I, uh, uh, most of the time, I'm not consciously thinking about all these things. But if I slow down and bring my attention to the, to the being part, then I can my awareness can be filled with all these things that are going on and I don't have to, to dwell on any one particular thing. But once I establish that state of being, then I do, then I say, oh, now I'm going to point my finger and reach toward the camera, right? And, oh, there we are, yeah, there's the camera, boom. And that's a conscious intent. 
if you bring that into your practice, I don't care what it is. If you do that, it changes radically what it is you're doing. You're not just going through a memorized sequence. You are creating something incredible each moment. So I'd like to have that in your mind as, as we're going to do the, uh, the warm up set and just uh, the reclaiming lost territory. And I want you to, to feel into those things as we do it. And you have this opportunity to reestablish that state of being many times a second, if you like. It's just a thought away. But it takes some practice of actually consciously doing it in order to be able to inculcate it into the doings of your life. But then once you do, once you start making that part of your life, then you are awake much of the time. That is, the light is on and you're able to see. You're actively, consciously interacting with your, your world in a way that is fresh and vital and endlessly filled with, with endless potential. Okay, so let's do the uh, the warm up set, and then we'll uh, want want you to focus on that as we're doing it. All right, so put your uh, right foot forward. Feel the ball of your right foot. Set your knee over the ball of the foot. So, and just get the feeling of that. We're breaking this back down again and really getting into the insubstantial part of it now. So I'm less concerned about what you're doing and more what you're feeling. I'm telling you what, you know, guiding you through this so that your conscious mind can take a little break and, and actually you can shift into that the super conscious state. Okay, reach with your your knee one. Tuck in your chin. Open the jade pillow gate. And just gently move. Use the quad. So you're relaxing, you're sinking down and feeling that. Feeling your your uh, your body kind of spiraling down into the earth like drilling in as you as you do this you're dropping everything's dropping nice and easy your arms are relaxed and all the movements happening down here at the quad you're reaching up with the knee one so there's this lengthening of your spine as you do that and feel into that as you do that so the doing here is something you're consciously activating, but you're also feeling and you're very present as, as, a, as a state of being. Good, now go to your back foot, your left foot, pick up your front heel, feel the ball of the foot, set the knee over the ball of the foot, and turn nice and easy from the quad. So there should be no strain on the knee at all as you do this. You're, you you want to make sure your butt's not pushed out so that that you have to do anything extreme to to uh, to keep your central equilibrium. The central equilibrium allows you to spin on this axis. And shift. Put your left foot forward, feel the ball of the left foot, set the left knee. Good, and turn. Something you want to say? No. You're picking up the right heel so that all the weight settles into that left leg. You're developing confidence, being able to, to feel that 
and um, confidence that in your ability to support your weight with your, you know, with one leg. And that allows you to move more gracefully, more confidently. You to pick up uh, your front heel, weight is in the right foot, feel the ball of the foot, set the knee and turn. Feel the foot, feel the knee, feel the top of your head, feel your shoulders, feel the quad. Good. Okay. Now, opening the jade pillow gate, so feel that point there right at the base of the skull. And lift your chin and reach down with your chin, lift it again. So you're really tucking that in. Feel the stretch in the back of your neck as you do that. Again, don't just do this mechanically. You want to feel it. Feel what you're doing there. Good. Reach out with your right arm. Reach with your head in the opposite direction. And feel the lengthening down your shoulder, your neck, down your arm. And you can move your arm around and find where it does you the most good. Turn your head a little bit, feel, feel that. You're opening up the space there. Yeah, the other side. Good. Roll your head. Reach to the top of your head. So you're lengthening the spine as you do this. Go the other direction. So you're not just grinding your vertebrae. You're actually creating space between the vertebrae. Good. Okay, rooster head. So turn sideways for this. So you push your face out, then pull it back. Good. Hmm. Now stand up straight and then tuck in your chin and very slowly let go. Unstack the vertebrae one at a time. Knees are, are bent. You're reaching to the top of your head, lengthening your spine as you get down. Keep your hands you know, close to your body on your thighs as you get down, your chin to your chest. And straighten your knees and continue. Just use the weight of your body. Yeah, bend your knees and sit down and then come up, stack up your vertebrae as you come up. Uh, 
hands come up, arch your back, open the shoulders, open the chest. Breathe. Come up and round your back. And then arch your back. Inhale as you arch your back. Exhale. Feel, feel the opening. Feel the lengthening of your connective tissue, your tendons and ligaments. Creating space in your joints. Feel the circulation. Good, and then knocking on the door. Good, and let your arms hang. Here's where you really get back just into pure being. You feel the balls of your feet, reach with your knee one, bring your elbows out slightly. Notice the difference if your elbows are out slightly and then just drop them entirely and just notice if they're hanging limp versus being out, reaching with the elbows. Feel the chi in your hands. Notice the difference there. Reach with your knee one, feel that. Feel the balls of your feet. Feel the, the chin surging through your body. Yeah, big circles. Inhale, arch your back. Reach with your elbows, your wrists, your hands. Arch your back. Ah, and exhale. Squat down and come up. Inhale and exhale. Good, and reverse it. Inhale, arch your back and exhale. Feel your arms, feel your shoulders, feel your knees as you get down, all that. Good, and bring your hands down. Breathe. Relax, feel the circulation, feel the chi, feel the, the, the fullness that comes with that. Yeah, now bring your hands up and out to the sides and you wanna drop your elbows a little bit. So don't, your arms are, elbows aren't up like that, they're dropped down. You reach out with your hands, and small circles. Bring your shoulder blades together and back. So you're opening, opening the uh, shoulder joint as you do that. You're creating some space there in the uh, shoulder joint where a lot of us get, get some pinching because of the way we sit and walk and hunch over. So they create that, there's some shoulder uh, pain that uh, develops from that, from shoulder impingement. Palms up and go the other way. So we're kind of creating some space and, and reclaiming the lost territory there in the shoulders. 
shedding some of that shoulder impingement. So even if it's not painful to you yet, it may be inhibiting your motion and uh, your range of motion. And bring your hands down. Feel the chi. And bring your hands up and um, kidney 27, right where your collarbone meets your sternum, just to the side of that and underneath the collarbone to the, the fleshy part there, find a tender spot and press in on that. Or you can also bump it with your fingers, breathe into the nose, out to the mouth. Uh, then get down to your second rib. Behind that is your thymus for your immune system. Really important right now. Press in or thump it. So you can do either. Breathe. Uh, on the side of your rib cage, find a tender spot. This will activate the spleen energy. This is good for metabolism, integration. Breathe into the nose, out to the mouth. And then on the underside of the cheekbone, stomach two. Now here with this one, I'd like you to feel the balls of your feet, really connect up the balls of your feet with the uh, with stomach two. And you can also add in that elbow chin, just reach out with that and really lights everything up for you. Good. Hook up, middle finger on the navel lifting up on the middle finger on the upper Dantian, the third eye, lift up on the, both of those, breathe in to the nose, out to the mouth. Good. Hands come down, just bring your arms out to the side. And allow yourself to just feel into that state of fullness. Good. You step in and deep breath, inhale. And press down and disappear the chi. And just dissolve into the emptiness. Yeah. Okay, take a seat.
to go to gallery. Yes, sir. Okay. Any questions, thoughts, observations, etc.? Rick is dancing. <laughs> That's a happiness. Good. Uh, anybody have any questions, thoughts? Uh, you liked it, Beatrice? That's good. Good. Okay. Dennis, yes. Valerie. Um, that was great. I have okay. been I have been noticing when I've been doing my set, I uh, consciously am, you know, I, I touch in and out, but I try to stay in my elbows or feel my elbows. And the amount of chi that I feel in my hands, which has always been good, is really accelerated. Um, right. So I don't, you know, you explain it very well my mind goes wow <laughs> you know i'm still just you know a lot of times i'm just shocked at the feelings that come out of, of doing tai chi chuan you know it's just like i get it's like a little surprise all the time but i have <laughs> been noticing, i've been noticing in the last several weeks an increase a definite marked increase fabulous yeah yeah i think it's great really cool Good. Uh, particularly regarding the elbow thing, I just wrote part two of the uh, my elbow gin series on the, on the website, and uh, uh, take a look at it if you can. It's uh, what I'm doing in that one is tying it into the uh, the Taiji Tran classics a little bit more, and uh, it's yeah. I, I wrote in, 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 the, in the blog, I said, I feel a little like Nicolas Cage who's kind of found a treasure map behind a mirror or something. It's uh, like, wait a minute, this has been there all along. And, uh, but it, it, it seems to have been. And uh, whether or not uh, that's what it actually means in the classics, it sure works in, in life. And I'm, uh, uh, I'm happy with that, and if it does tie in with with that, and we, you know, we've actually able to make sense of something which has been uh, has been baffling me for decades. That is, what what do they mean by Joe? You know, they you know, it can't just be an elbow strike. It's a, that's the way it's always translated, but it just doesn't that just doesn't make any sense to me at all. So this is a, another alternative way of looking at it, which I think is, um, uh, is helpful. Anybody else? Lynn. Um, yeah, I too have been rejoicing in, in having elbows, as I think I said before. Um, you got two of them. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and they like rock. They totally rock. Um, but I, I noticed when you asked us sitting to connect to our elbows and our hands and just, you know, feel inside. I did that beautifully for about an iota of time. And then I started describing what I was feeling inside, which of course took me out. Um, and so, uh, but I think when, when we just did the opening, I was much better able, because there was maybe, because there was movement involved, I was much better able to keep, you know, checking in with different parts and feeling like what's this feeling what's that feeling without it being thoughtful you know right. and i do have one question and that is i don't know where the point on the bottom of the cheekbone is oh so right right you, know, you feel your your cheekbone right closer to center right under your directly straight down from your pupil okay okay so right there ah, got it okay press in you, you may feel a little tenderness there yep. that's uh Good. So that, that's your uh, that's stomach two. Stomach so you just, yeah, I think stomach one's up here, and then, then stomach two is right here. So it's uh, this boom. It's, yeah. Yeah. yeah so you, know, you press in on that. You feel the balls of the feet. You know, uh, uh, I I find that connection to be just like electric. And then if you add a little elbow into that, it's like you're off to the races. Um, so. I <laughs> 
Yeah. Anybody else? Beatrice. Beatrice. Is that, is that de facto? Actually, is that de facto pressing into the, your the very top of your gum line? Like, so I feel like I'm. No. Like the no. Uh, uh, above that. So the cheekbone itself. So oh, your uh, was itself. it your maxim mandible your or is it, uh right there at your cheekbone. So when you say under, you don't because when, when I was going beneath it and that was going into like the very top of my gum line hitting. No, no, no. Line. You're you go to the you follow follow the the cheekbone down right. There's a kind of on the, uh, a roundness oh, there, right? So you bone follow bone. it down without okay. leaving the bone. So it's the underside of the bone pressing up. Thank you. Thank you. So I, it, I I find it uh, it helpful to to play with that one. Very different. Just like, yeah, different. feels feels you know it it does something. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> good, good. Anybody else? Any other questions? Okay. Um this idea of of being prior to the doing. Any thoughts on that? Anybody have uh, uh do you understand what, what we're talking about here? The uh, um, yeah, it might might be helpful if uh, if I can get uh, Maria to, to uh, help me do a little demonstration here. So, uh, so you might want to want to give me a hand with this. So the uh, oh oh all right no my. <laughs> <laughs> And then take this long. Take it up. Okay, so uh, so if Maria wants to say just to push me, so she's going to she's going to 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 execute that. She's going to push. Go ahead, push. And there's uh, it um, using her body as she would as one would ordinarily mechanically it. There's a, um, well, it's not very strong. <laughs> it hurts. It hurts. But to, to be able to feel into her body and actually change her state of being. So when she does that, I'm already gone. As soon as she makes that jump in her own, changes her own energy, and she does it again, and it's not happening this time because she didn't take that step to establish the being first, but then when she does, it immediately moves the shape. It moves the uh, moves the energy and it moves me. And it's we add an, an extra arm into it, and it becomes more difficult. All right, so there's it becomes harder to do because you have to then go access back to my state. You have to go back to your state, and still not happening. Now, boom, as soon as she makes that shift, magic happens. And this is great for throwing people around, it's great for party tricks and stuff like that too. But it also, just being able to hold that and feel into that, and for that moment, you are godlike in, the, in, that, in your ability. It's just like, you're able to transform everything and becomes just like that. You become, you become what we what we dream about. So, so thank you. So, uh, hey Maria, yeah, can you describe <laughs> this shift? Um. Well, <laughs> I haven't got it all down, as you can tell, but it goes from being. Uh, describing small changes. So here I'm resisting. Right. And I'm locked up here. Right. And now if I get some and I release and I feel my elbow. Right. And okay. Cool. It, it goes from uh, to uh, but more than mechanical. Uh. It's not mechanical at all. It's like it's like letting go 
of the physical. Cool. So that's Jim. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I want to say something. Yes. This is Beatrice. So uh, I don't know. Sometime in the last couple of weeks, I was I was like kind of fixated on. Oh, sorry. Hold on. Okay. There. Okay. Say again. Sometime in the last couple of weeks, I kept I was really fixating on how can we reproduce that experience of of what of we, what we experience when we, when we witness each other, when we witness that shift. Yes. Like, I'm sort of wondering how can we do this remotely with Zoom and you know because that's such a source of um of teaching for me and, and actually of alchemy and transformation and it's totally visible it's I'm, I'm so thrilled it's it's that the way the same way it is when we're in the room together it's completely visible Maria's shift you can just see it you can see when it's on and not on and I'm just really excited that because I think that I, somehow for me witnessing it really. Right. It's almost like Good. it's almost like a transmission. Like I can feel it in my. I can feel. I can access it more easily myself. Beautiful, beautiful. To see it, you have to open your three eyes. Yes. You know, the eye of flesh, eye of mind, eye of spirit. And most of the time, we spend it in our eye of mind, where you know we're locked into a representational perception of the world. But whenever we go into that state there's it's just now and you're still able to think you're still able to use your eye of flesh as well but we're there so what i was saying before it's like yes it's, it's really cool to be able to do this party trick but more importantly it's it takes you to that place where you awaken your eye of spirit and enables you to to do more you know it uh and what was that was a quote from the uh something about gin if you uh, uh enables you to have to have to look up it was in the blog there's a quote there about about gin and how it opens these divine like qualities in us by whenever we learn to access gin it's because we are no longer contained by strictly our, our animal self but we're able to integrate that with this this whole other state of being so um if we can bring that that uh, awareness oh you want to say something yeah i just wanted to say that it just dawned on me that when i when i get into just being physical i'm limiting my effective power because I have a thought of myself as a, you know, 110 pound weakling, you know, who's 70 years old and, you know, all of that. I have that picture of myself. So I have to let all of that go and just be in order to let to go past my own vision of myself. Yes. Yes. Wonderful. That's well stated. You know, but uh, in that eye of mind, we're always in this subject object split. That's how the mind works. It, 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 it creates separation in order to be able to distinguish anything. So as soon as we make that, that, that hair's breadth distinction, this is not that, then suddenly we were, we're split. But that is how we transmit knowledge. We transmit knowledge by by making those distinctions, just as I am doing now. But part of the words that I'm, I'm using are to create a map so that we can also, anytime we want, slide to the gap between thoughts and feel that wholeness that, it mean, that, that comes with body, mind, spirit integration. So it's that state of wholeness and being able to go there often and be able to dwell there that enables us to uh, to count on this stuff when we need it. And it also creates a, you know, a, uh, a peace. And it changes your, your, um, 
you physically as well. You know, I was talking with uh, uh, Larry Wolf. He was at uh, Judge Yagami a couple of couple of years ago, and he uh, he uh, he has one of the more difficult jobs. He's a uh, you know uh, in charge of uh, pediatric. Uh, cancer at, uh, at a, a large uh, Long Island hospital, and he uh, he says that you know the the cases for the the coronavirus are really affecting these kids a lot, and uh, so he's got a lot a lot of stress in his job. But he's been applying this stuff in his meditation, and he said his blood pressure dropped twenty points, and it you know. It had been kind of stuck at a very high level for years, and now, but even in the midst of all this this chaos, he's was able to actually bring his his um, systolic pressure down twenty points, which is significant. So um, it has real real benefits to, uh, but beyond its you know those 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 qualities that we assign to it, there is this state of pure being. That is just delicious to to inhabit for its own sake, right, Rick? <laughs> Good. Yes, Richard. Unmute, please. Um, I've I've been thinking about um, I don't know if I'd call it continuity or the continuum, uh, beginning with the edge of the work that we've done over the years. Mm -hmm. You see that as uh, as stepping into where we're getting now. Oh yeah, I mean the, the edge was just thinking? one edge was one way of of taking us out of the out of this kind of it was done as as mainly just to correct push hands as being done in my class and every class I've ever been in where there's you know this kind of uh, conflict going on and and you know, people getting locked into into uh, muscle uh, struggles. You know, so I, I I did that, but it extends way beyond just that. Once you uh, you know the application of it, is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, I um, I, I often think about the things we've done in the past <clears throat> mm -hmm. and the insights into um, continuity or connectedness that we've had at all the different steps of the way. Um, and, you know, I, I, I mean, I'm thinking like, well, well, a few years ago, we just had to point. And, uh, you know, now pointing is part of the experience, but it's, it seems like, it seems like, um, um, you know, all, almost a curriculum to teach you to become coherent. Yeah, um, coherent and beyond. You know, the coherence is coherence is is the, is the state of wholeness, which then yes. sets the foundation for us to do much much more. Right, and that's what yeah. what I was thinking about what you were saying about um, becoming coherent before you move. Yes, I think I think probably, you know, you yourself are at a at a general state of coherence, where you can become coherent while moving. But I think for, for me, of course, it's really important for me to become coherent. And then I'm starting to get just a little experience of what can happen after that. Um, and, it, and it feels like, um, it feels like a fullness, a, a spherical fullness. Yes. And, and, it, and it's an evident, uh, sometimes it's almost like a pop. Um, so I'm, you know, I'm starting to, fe I'm starting to feel some of those things. Um, I'm not, I'm not confident in, you know, the things that we do together, <laughs> doing that alone. Yeah. So I don't. I'm starting to ramble now. That's that. I was just talking about. Con thinking of our work in the past as a continuum to get us to where we are now. It might be good to talk about that. I don't know if that's going to be discussed in the, the next book. I can't wait. Uh, yeah. yeah uh, 
send me your thoughts on that because I'm curious because you actually you've been uh, you've been keeping a kind of a a, a mental uh, developmental log as we <laughs> over the years and since you don't work with me every day you know like some of these guys do that uh, you you get these snapshots you know and which is his own perspective you know. A lot of my guys, they just like, you know, it's just like, yeah, it's just what we do, you know. <laughs> but it, it doesn't stand out. It's kind of like, like uh, the days during the the, the COVID-19 uh, epidemic, pandemic, you know. Like the days kind of go together. It's hard to get, you know, uh, these, uh, to, to separate them. But you have a, 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 a perspective that comes from, from popping in and out every couple of months. And uh, that, that, that's helpful. I, I, I will do. I will do that, Rick. I'll put something. Great, thank you. Yeah, did you have something? Oh yeah, I just. I, it was so interesting that Richard brought up the edge exercise because when Maria talked about that when she popped into coherence or whatever you want to say that she had this feeling where her story about being however many pounds she is, woman, blah blah blah, wasn't how she was identifying, and that's to me the most astonishing and almost consistent thing that happens for me with the edge exercise is in the final two stages where am i now where am i now here i am where are you now here you are i've i've always had this experience where i suddenly see the person across from me without their story like it's been this remark like it's been years now where like it like their story like falls off of them their story about who they are and their age and their gender all of that it just goes and i just see their it's, it's the, I guess it's the I thou thing you think you, you talk about. It is. It is. So when Maria mentioned that feeling, I was like, oh, that's what happens for me. That's what the edge always, that's the place the edge exercise always brings me to. And I love that Richard was like asking about the continuity between the different exercises because I was just noticing that myself. Yeah. And going back to what you were saying earlier, whenever you do those, the, the, the edge exercise, I get to watch you do exactly what you were saying to Maria, you know, that, that, <laughs> that transformation that occurs and, uh, wow, you know, here we are. <laughs> yeah, it's, so, back. it's so quiet though. That's the whole, like, you know, when it was at a, another quantum leap or another, another a whole order of nothing. Like it's such, it, that's what's <laughs> a whole new totally, order of nothingness. Yeah. It's totally <laughs> nothing. That's what's so slippery. I think. Yeah, it's beautiful, beautiful. Uh, anybody else? Any other thoughts? I, I just wanted to reiterate that. Uh, it, Come over here. Okay. Yeah. I just wanted to agree <laughs> in that um, what we're doing is in that the more we get coherent and super conscious and into a feeling state and sensing. Uh, at some point, you let go of the idea of who you are, or what you are, and then you can go beyond that. And we all, our stories and everything, are all limiting ourselves. So, and sometimes they're very comfortable stories, you know, very comfortable stories. But uh, if you're brave enough, just to be able to practice this and let go of the story, then there's a whole other territory beyond what you think you are that is waiting to be discovered. <laughs> <laughs> Amen to that. And it's like it's like a rebirth at that point. It's like, oh, oh, now I can start. I can finally start my life. You know, once you have that that wake up there, it's like, oh good, all right. We're, uh, I'm in a state of wholeness now, and and that way you get to be reborn, you know, many times a day if you like. So it's uh, it's kind of cool that way. Great. Anybody else? Beatrice, oh, you're just you're just saluting. Good. Okay. Thank you all so much. It's been really uh -huh. great, and I uh, uh, hope to see you next week. Okay. Love you. Bye bye. Make your donation. Make your donation. Thank you, Valerie. <laughs> yes, thank you. <laughs> on, the, on the website? On the website, yeah, that's fine. Okay.
PayPal. Uh, PayPal or Venmo, but they, the, the information's on the website. It's on Facebook. Thank so. Okay, thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank bye you, bye. Thank you, Rick. Thank you so much. Thanks for coming. <clears throat> Love you all. Wouldn't be a party you without are. you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay.